to the vlog. I'm Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design. It's April 1st and I'm going to my broker sales meeting and we're having it at one of her houses. So there's a broker's open house immediately after and <laughs> it's a very small neighborhood so all of our cars have taken up the two streets and all the side parking that's here uh, as y'all can see. Um, so yeah. Let's go into this meeting, get some food, do a little sales meeting, learn some things, and carry on with our day and month. Hello, good people. I think I already said welcome to April. If I did not, welcome to April. It is April 3rd, and I, I'm headed to go meet a client it's on this beautiful Sunday. Houston weather is giving, okay? It's giving all the goodness we need. Um, She's still actually a little ahead of the game as far as we're basic, we're shopping early. So we've been considering, I need to get my phone thing back. It'll just be easier if I just hold y'all real quick. So she is looking for, she's being very specific about the schools that she wants to be zoned to. Um, she works like downtown Houston. Her husband works like on the outskirts of Houston, so they definitely need to be located more northeast. Um, and she's looking for a four bedroom, um, two story preferably because she really loves high ceilings. She's open to resale, um, but y'all know the market, resale is tough. So I was trying to see if there was gonna be any new construction. Um, that would fit her needs. Uh, her price point is they're approved for three fifty. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen as far as new construction because the new construction that I can find in that price point isn't in the areas that she wants to be or the neighborhoods are zoned to schools that she does not want um, to be zoned to. So. More than likely, we'll end up going with a resale home, but we are still waiting. Um, if we do resale, we'll really kind of have to wait it out a little bit, maybe another 30 days, because she was a teacher and then she got um, a new job. So she is using her um, retirement fund, teacher retirement fund, whatever it is it's called, um, as some of her money for their closing costs. And that is taking a little bit longer for her to get. Um, so they, last time we checked in, they said it may be like another 60 days. So it's not like 401k where, you know, they just pull it and, you know, kind of like a bank account. I guess because she's no longer a teacher anymore, they actually dissolve the account and just give her her cash or whatever. Maybe that was a choice. I don't really know. But all I know is that we have to wait um, another 30 to 60 days. So what I don't want to do is go hunt for a resale home, potentially get under contract on one, and then when it's time to close in 30 days, she still doesn't have the funds. So we're playing it safe with that one. Uh, but we are just going to go potentially look at new construction. You know, I like to give my clients all their options. A lot of people say no, 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 when they're just looking online. Um, but I wholeheartedly believe that you have to get in the building, you know, to just really get a vibe and feel of what it is. Um, but when I was looking this morning, you know, uh, Anything four bedroom, two story, and the locations that she wants to be is like 380 plus right now. So we're gonna just go and what in the good heavens? People just do the weirdest things on the road. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, we're gonna look at new construction today and resale. So far as like the upfront money, yeah, I think for sure. Comfortably, we probably have what they like 30. Y'all are good. I'm going to say 
I, he would say 20 is a comfortable place. It's a comfortable we place. Have like, we have like 20, like 20 saved that we could be like, okay, this is our money for like. Mm-hmm. So well, because no. y'all are first time home buyers and more than likely I'm thinking that you all will qualify for a conventional loan. And in a second, I'll tell you the difference between FHA and conventional. Wait, are either one of you all um, military? No. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. I work in a medical field, but that helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that helps. He may be able to. Time. He may be able to get like a little thousand dollar credit or something, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll talk about down payment assistance too. So. More than likely, you'll qualify for a conventional loan with 3% down. Okay. Um, so, basically, if you purchase a home, $350,000, $300,000, we'll just stick with three hundred. Okay. $300,000 times that 3% is $9,000. That's your down payment for the home, right? And then you'll have your closing costs to be paid as well. And that that just ranges depending on what the lender's fees are, what the title fees are, but that can range anywhere between another two to four percent of the cost of the home. Okay. So normally I just like to double the down payment. So just yeah. say six percent total is how I usually do it, just to kind of give a real estimated ballpark right. of what your so closing costs right. would look like. So that's fifteen thousand dollars right there. Okay. Um, all of that would be paid. At closing. So people get confused, but your down payment isn't actually paid until closing day. Okay. Um, that means keys. Closing day means keys. You can move in. Yes. Okay. Yay. Take Yay. a picture. Get your okay. keys. <laughs> you know, but there are funds that are due during the process. So one is going to be your earnest money for the home. So what your earnest money deposit is, it's basically just like, I like to explain it like a kind of like a security deposit. You know, like when you move into an apartment, they say, okay, give me this much money to first to secure this property for you until you're ready to move in and pay your first month's rent. Right. Okay. Um, and then it kind of gets credited towards that, right? So that's the same thing with purchasing a home. Whether it's a resale home or a new construction home, everyone has the earnest money. Standard uh-huh. is 1% of the cost of the home. Um, that's what you see on like the resale side. If you're buying a resale home, normally people want 1% of whatever the agreed purchase price is okay. with new construction. It's going to vary. And I wish I had a better answer for you, but I don't, it just varies depending okay. on the builder and depending on how much they want to charge. Um, I've seen it be $250 and I've seen it be $10,000. So okay. it's just going to be dependent on who that builder is and what they're charging. Most of them do 1%. Some of them will say five when you start kind of getting like to the fancier builders yeah. um, and things like that. So those are funds that you'll need up front. Okay. Um, and then once you pay that, you'll have to pay for an inspection. Excuse me. Even with new construction, you'll pay for an inspection. Well, you should definitely get your home inspected if it's a new construction or not. Um, mm-hmm. Inspections are, you know, anywhere between like 350 to $500, okay. um, depending on the square footage of the home and just the inspector, how much they want to charge. Um, then there's also, this is specifically for resale homes. There's what we call an option period um, where you pay the seller a couple of hundred dollars Maybe no more than really three, five hundred dollars, just depending on the house, um, mm-hmm. to take the home off the market for a period of time. You negotiate that with the amount that you're deciding that you want to pay to have all your inspections done. But that's only for resale if we decide to go that route. Okay. Um, for new construction, you don't have to do that. Right. Um, then you will have to pay for the appraisal of the property. All homes have to be appraised um, because the lender needs to know the value of the home and to make sure that that value of the home matches how much they're lending you for the home. Okay. So with appraisals, if the house is $300,000, you are putting down $9,000, your appraisal will need to come back at $291,000. So whatever they're loaning you is how much the home has to meet for value. 
Right. If it does not meet the appraisal value, then you're going to, you know, trying to figure out, am I going to pay the difference of the appraisal value? Is the seller going to lower the price? Or are yeah. we going to come to an agreed meeting spot on this? Right. Mm -hmm. um, most builders are not going to lower their price. Right. Um, resale is a little different. You can negotiate it, but most builders will not lower their price. They're just okay. going to, you either pay it or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um, you may or may not have to pay for a survey. That's just going to be dependent. And a survey is just basically um, a map of the property, okay. basically. Um, so that will have to be paid depending on if it's a resale or not. Um, but that is that fee is actually put into, I believe, the closing cost. Um, and that's really it. Now, um, you may have to pay for like some HOA things for like certifications and things, but that's also if there's an HOA or not. Okay. Um, but that's really all of the upfront funds that you okay. pay. Everything else is paid on closing day. I, that's pretty much the bulk of like I think our questions like where we were at as far as like don't know not knowing like knowing no nothing yeah anyway, like you know um even though we're say we're approved for like a four hundred thousand dollar loan does mm -hmm. that necessarily mean that we have to use all of that money to purchase the home no mm -mm. Like, so no so that is you're approved for a max amount right so it's not like it's not, it's not like, it's not like student loans where we used to get a refund. It's not like that. <laughs> you know, okay. it's okay. not like yeah. that. So yeah. they, they say this is your max purchase amount. So then once we go out and find a home and we submit a contract and then we say, Hey, this is how much of that amount that we need. And then okay. that other money is nowhere to be found. Okay. So it's not like. It's not like four hundred thousand dollars is what you get, and then the home is yeah, three fifty, no. and y'all are getting like fifty thousand dollars. No, so like, no, it's yeah. not. Yeah, it's not like they're just. <laughs> it's not like they're giving you cash and saying, "Hey, here's your money. Now go find a house." <laughs> yeah, I wish. No, they're not doing that. So what happens is, okay, cool. Is um, when people are speaking about equity, mm -hmm. they have purchased their home. I'll give you I'll give you an example of a client that I had last year. They purchased their home for three hundred thousand. Now mm -hmm. their home is worth four hundred thousand. So they okay. basically built a hundred thousand dollars in equity. Now okay. when they sell that property, they can sell it for what it's currently worth. They pay off their loan amount and they just and the balance is their what they've netted. That's their cash for them. Hundred thousand dollars would be the cash that they walk from. Basically, minus some taxes and this and this. But yes. So I was I am interested in building maybe over there. Yeah. Um, just because I think that it it could build equity maybe yeah. in the next five to ten. And so that's I, that's that a good be thought good. because you know on average. This isn't going to be y'all's forever home, more than likely, right. right? Like, on average, people are staying in homes now, like, five years. You know, yeah. it used to be seven. I think it's dwindled down to, like, five. Yeah. I personally think for people our age, um, you know, if y'all had kids or if that's on the route, you know, the look, then, then maybe think a little bit more into location and things yeah. like that. But right now, I don't know what y'all plans are, but right now, it's just the yeah. two of you. Yeah. I think the smart thing to do is to buy somewhere where you're going to gain crazy equity. Yeah. Um, and then in these hot spots, like if you go to the suburbs, you're still going to gain it, but it takes a little bit longer. Yeah, but I would think so. Once you yeah. stay in the loop, you know, um, you'll, you'll gain because the client I just mentioned, they bought in Spring Branch. Their house is worth literally $100,000 more just a year later, just yeah. because of the way that the market was shifting over the last few years. That's not always guaranteed, but just the way that Houston is booming and how price points are increasing, it's going to yeah. happen. Um, yeah, so I if you want to look at it as more as like, yeah, this is our home, but we're also looking at it from an investment standpoint, I right. think that's a good thing. I think it's, you know, if you can afford it to pay a little bit of that higher mortgage just to secure one of those properties 
and know that you can sell it in the next two, three, four years and make a nice six figure check off of it. Why not? I think it would be worth it. I mm -hmm. like to, to do it at least not to, since we wouldn't be, we probably wouldn't be living in it for longer than three to five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then even if we did have kids in the next few years, I mean, they wouldn't need to be going to school and for the next five years. Exactly. Exactly. So exactly. it just makes sense anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm have a little bit more of a positive outlook because I think oh, I was, good. I was under shooting ourselves as far as like what we could affordability goes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess like the next step would just for us to get pre-approved and see where we're at. Right. Yeah, exactly. So pre-approvals, they last, uh, depending on the lender, 90 to uh, three to four months. Um, also, when you close on your property, you don't pay your first mortgage until 45 days later. So okay. if you do find something, if you do close on something, say December, your first mortgage wouldn't be due until basically February. Good morning, good people. Today is Monday, April 4th. And Monday has been Monday and so far. Um, just got off the phone with um, a new potential buyer client. They're looking to be moved um, first quarter of next year, but they're wanting to do new construction. So y'all know how that goes. It's time to um, get them pre-qualified and lock them down on something. Um, and yeah, I need to touch base with um, just other people and see what's going on, you know, with um, the property for Jessica that was delayed for closing at the end of last month. We were supposed to close. Um, they're saying potentially we're supposed to close this week. Um, I have to look at the calendar, y'all, my brain. Um, but yeah, so just wanted to check in. Good morning, y'all. Hope y'all are doing well. Hello, good people. Good afternoon. Today is April 7th. It's noonish o'clock. Um, and I've just been working and not talking to y'all. I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> right now, I am at the Next Gen offices. I'm just trying to get some things together here, trying to schedule some listings for another client. Um, trying to find some new construction for another client like I am just I, the take the realtor out of me and I am just so like besides myself at the fact that I cannot find a new construction four bedroom home under $350,000 y'all that is that blows my mind for this to be Houston, Texas, and this is the state that we're in. But as a realtor, I understand what's going on. I know what's going on. But just as a consumer of real estate, a buyer, like, whoo. So I am out here, like, trying to scrounge to see what I can find because the resale market is so tough. Uh, um, <laughs> clients are funny. Um, so I think... A few vlogs ago, I don't know what those noises are, y'all. A few vlogs ago, I was telling y'all that um, I was working um, with another realtor as her her buyer's agent, you know, helping her out, you know, making a little extra money. Long story short, I did that with one client for her, and fast forward, it's been like a month now, maybe. Um, over the past month, that client had been expressing to me. Um, how much they disliked their realtor and didn't feel like they were getting the best customer service from her, et cetera, et cetera, was wanting me to take over for them for a long period of time. And I was convincing them and, you know, telling them to keep calm, stay calm, just stay with it because we found the property, you know, you don't want to lose contract, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, the beginning of this week, um, they finally reached their peak with their realtor and they said, you know what, Alexia, we don't really care. Um, we can lose the house. I just, I don't want to work with her anymore. I, I want you to be um, our full realtor that's representing us, you know, because I had explained to them that, you know, I'm just 
showing you the properties. She's the one that's gonna do everything else for you. So long story short, um, they went ahead and terminated her as their realtor. And the real only way to do that is they would have to cancel their contract on the property that we found, which is what I was trying to avoid. Um, but he was adamant about it. So they went ahead and canceled the contract or their, it's not canceled yet, but it's in, in the process of being canceled. Um, the issue is that he wants to keep the house if he can. I would love for him to keep the house if he can because going back out and finding a, a house for him um, at $250,000 or less um, four bedrooms yet again is <laughs> honestly it's just a battle that I'm not trying to do. I ain't trying to do it again because it, it took me two weeks last time to find you that house. New construction. So the sales agent um, for his home was off the last two days. So I just got off the phone with him. Sorry, y'all, just beeping away. Um, I just got off the phone with him, and he said that he sent his management an email to see if there is a way to switch um, realtors on the contract. Um, because, like I said, he wants to keep the home. Normally, you, you really can't do that. You know, like once it's a realtor you know assigned to you and literally assigned to that property um that's just really it and if you want to cancel your contract then you cancel your contract but then to even come back and have another realtor sign that same property contract with you again it just it just kind of goes against all kind of um, buyer representation agreement rules and ethical laws and things like that. But the only reason, the only reason I'm even entertaining the thought of doing this is that um, it's because I know this realtor won't come back at me and be like, well, you know, I showed him that house and da 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 because she didn't. I showed him the house in our agreement was what it was, even though that's not on paper. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not worried about her going to the Texas Real Estate Commission Board and saying blah, blah, blah. That would be like where it would get to. So now I just have to see if the builder, which is D.R. Horton, if they're going to be willing to do it. Um, if not, we might just have to cancel the contract and they have all rights to increase the price point and then, you know, we have to consider and see if he wants to re-sign at whatever they've increased. Because honestly, when it was with, when he was still uh, with the other realtor, um, things happened. <laughs> and it, the the price point of the home ended up going up because they, they lost the contract and had to get it back and D.R. Horton increased the price point. So I'm trying not to have that happen again. Um, so we'll see. Um, but, you know, everything has been disclosed to everybody that's a part of this whole process that's going on. I spoke with the realtor after he told me that he terminated her and I said, hey, he wants me to be his realtor. You know, we'll just basically switch the roles. I'll just give you a referral fee. And she was cool with that. So it's not like I'm just snatching up her client and, and running off with the money or whatever. Um, he was very adamant about it. And trust me, y'all, when I said I tried to push this off for a strong month, a strong month, I've been like, no, 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 stay over there. You know, just trying to do what I personally felt like was the right thing to do as far as like business. But, but she said, okay, you know, just give me a referral fee. She said some other things that weren't very nice. Um, but that's not here nor there. <laughs> um, so yeah, working on trying to just hopefully get, get that done. And Hey vlog, um, I keep switching back and forth between this cinematic look and just the regular one. We'll see what the vlog comes out like. If it's annoying to y'all, let me know and I'll just stick with um, the regular video. But I just, I like, I like that y'all can just focus on me. Um, anywho, I feel like it has been days since I've updated you all. Um, 
I've just been so busy. It's been just hard for me to remember to just like pull out the phone. But it's April 13th. Um, I don't even know what the last thing was that we talked about. So I'm just going to update you. Um, one, first, we finally got Jessica's um, appointment to do her walkthrough, which means that pretty much the builder is ready to go and to close. Um, but you know, I've been having difficulties with um, the listing agent, just the builder overall in general, um, and their different counterparts of just getting things done on a timely manner on their end. So with the listing agent, um, she's purchasing a condo, title and lender need, you know, all kind of documentation from condo people, all kind of stuff. And we've literally been asking this man for these documents for three weeks. We finally gotten to the point where he's providing information because I had to call him the other day and I was like, look, you know, like you, we have had to extend the closing date, um, we were we supposed to close March 31st. As of right now, we're extended to the 20th. I honestly think we probably won't close until the 22nd, next week, Friday. Um, but every time I've asked him to extend, he's like, well, well, well. And I'm like, well, nothing. First of all, y'all aren't done. Your, your superintendent over the building has not contacted me to say anything or give me a time frame. So sign this. And so, you know, he signed it and put a little... You know, we'll close when the property is ready. We will not close when the property is ready because guess what? You are still dropping the ball on the other end. You know, Title has been emailing you. Title and Lender has been emailing this man every day, calling this man to get him just to fill out one little stinking document, y'all. Anyway, so now we're, we're at that point. But um, I don't know, something about the insurance um, for the for the condominium that the builder has to have. Um, there's a delay in getting that, um, which we asked for weeks ago, but now that we're finally to the point of actually communicating with them, um, there's a delay in getting that. So they're saying that we'll have that tomorrow, which will be Thursday. And then once they actually get that, the lender will then have to submit everything back to underwriting. Um, underwriting can take, hopefully they'll move pretty swiftly, but you know, that could take another 72 hours, you know, 24 to 72 hours, just depending, just depending on how fast they move. Um, and then once we actually get the clear to close from underwriting, then we'll have to submit documentation to, um, the neighborhood lift program that is giving Jessica the um, $15,000. So she has an outside program away from just her lender that is giving her funds. So we need to submit to them at least three days prior to closing so they can release the funds to the lender. This is why I'm saying that I still don't think we'll actually close next week, Wednesday. It's looking more like next week, Friday. Um, so I actually need to call Jessica and give her my thoughts on it. If we do end up closing next week, Wednesday, hallelujah. Um, but, you know, people are, are dragging their feet and moving slow. And it's like, we have been working on this contract since, shoot, when do we write this? Sometime in end of February, early March. So I think it was end of February. So to me, there's really no reason why it has taken this listing agent and his people to just get the documentation that we've needed over to the lender and title. You know, it's one thing for the actual build, you know, to be delayed, but for doc documents that we could have been had this clear to close and we could have just been literally waiting for the property to be ready. Like, y'all know, things just be blowing my mind. So my mind is blown, but that's that. And then Taryn, um, we got her clear to close. That went smoothly. Um, and the 
the uh, the builder asked. We got the clear to close shoot on Monday. And so as soon as that email went out, the builder was texting, hey, you know, does she want to close early? Um, but she does not. Um, <laughs> she's just like, she she has a new job and it's really hard for her to maneuver um, meetings and dates and times, you know, understandably so. But she's also just like, well, I've just had the 20th in my head. Her, she's also scheduled to close on the 20th, which is next week, Wednesday. Um, she's like, I've just had that date in my head and you know that's I had set up everything to be you know power sources to be turned on that day movers and you know all of that stuff and I explained to her I said hey nobody's actually rushing you to move into the property um they just want to know if we can sign documents you know and, and close and now you take over the property after that's done you can still move in and do whatever you want and she understood that but um she still opted to close on the 20th which her decision, we respect it as long as we don't go past the 20th, right? Because that is what is on the contract, closing on or before the 20th. Um, so, yeah, that's that. She um, she got an estimate of her closing costs, which it scared her because the estimate sometimes, just depending on who the lender is, they don't, they don't put in all the credits. You know, they have to send all these little papers out and get them signed so many days prior to this and this and this. She got one that scared her, so I kind of had to talk her off the ledge a little bit the other day. And I was like, just wait till we get that final one. Um, but she's good. And then, and yesterday, I went out with Terry and Tamisha. Well, Terry's in Atlanta. Tamisha is his representative here. This was the situation that I was telling you all about. The um, He terminated his buyer agreement with his other realtor. And he decided to work with me. I think, I'm pretty sure I told y'all about that. Um, so what we were trying to do was hold on to the property that they were already under contract for. The one that I, particularly me, me, the one that I found them um, as their showing agent when I was in working with the lady that they decided to terminate. Um... And, you know, she, you know, I had talked to her about it and she was fine. You know, she's like, hey, okay, let's just reverse the commission. You'll, you'll just give me a referral fee, basically 70, 30. And we were good, like with that, but with real estate and I, I knew it wasn't going to be this simple, but you know, you always got to try. Um, once you sign a contract and even a buyer's agreement with someone, especially with new construction, once you enter a new construction builder once you enter a new construction community and you have a realtor that's representing you, they put all that information into the computer and say, okay, this person came in with this realtor. They were the ones that showed them this community, this property, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we even took it a step further. They were under contract with the other realtor's name on um, the contract. So what DR Horton told me was, they basically to CYA to cover them, although myself and the other realtor had an agreement, um, they would still need a written letter from the other realtor's broker saying that they were okay with that because technically it's not supposed to be done, right? That's what, that is what a buyer's representation agreement is for. Even if it's resale, um, there's still... When I send those out, there's like a 31 day protection clause on things like if you decide to terminate me as your realtor, but I've already showed you this pro pro um, property and I've already, you know, done some of this work. I was the one that introduced you to this property and you go and put another realtor's name on it. Then there's a protection clause in that that says, ah, you can't do that. So it's kind of like the same idea here, right? Um, so... I said, okay, so I called her, and um, she said no, um, and not, not nothing to do with how she feels about me, um, but she said no, she wasn't willing to do that, so, and if you know anything about Alexia, I'm not about to beg you for anything, you know, although this market is tough, and I would have loved for him to be able to keep that house, um, I'm not groveling. <laughs> I just don't have it in me to do it, right? I just don't have it in me to do it. 
Um, so she said no, and I said okay. No is no. You keep it moving. I ain't going to force you. Um, so I expressed that to him, and he said, you know, I figured as much. Blah, blah. So I was like, all right. Well, actually, she didn't just say no. I'm trying to figure out how much of this I should tell y'all, but whatever. She, um, she, um, her and the buyer, clearly he terminated her. They, they were not meshing well. So she's, she, she didn't want to do any extra favors. And she said, you know, and if that's the case, then we can, her and I can just put the commission 50, 50, we'll keep it in her name and we'll just put it 50, 50. And that, that's not fair to me. <laughs> at all um 50 commission for me to do all of the work is a no for me so um we're not moving forward with that um so we went back out yesterday and we found a house and we found the perfect house actually speaking of the house let me email this lady good morning jill Morning, Jill. Any update on the price? So we went back out to Conroe first. He was we were gonna go back to like the south side of Houston. South side of Houston just wasn't giving what we was needing. Okay, so we went back to Conroe because Conroe was giving what we was needing. Um, looked went specifically to look at one community. We looked at it. wasn't bad. Um. But, you know, I am very specific, and uh, this isn't a bad thing, but when clients tell me what they want in a home, like, I make it my mission to find it, my mission to find what they're looking for. Like, I understand there's some things, of course, I understand there's some things that we're, we're just not going to get, um, but he told me, you know, and he had the simple ask. He said he wanted three bedrooms and a game room. So basically two-story home, three bedrooms and a game room. He was real simple about what he wanted. But nothing, you know, all these other... We, we found that yesterday at the first community that we went to, Anglia Homes in Conroe. They had a super low tax rate, 1.8. Like, I was like, wait a minute. But it's also still very rural. Um, and it's about... I would say it's about a 25 minute drive from the highway. So it was still just kind of tucked away. Um, but we went into the house and you know, like it was just here, there things are missing. Like it had a covered patio, but it was kind of like on the side of the house and the yard was weird. Um, no gas, just electricity, um, just a regular standard tub, no separate shower, not even a garden tub, you know, just, Little things here and there that were missing. The single sink instead of, you know, double sinks in the primary. Not that they was looking for those specific things. Um, but I just feel like better resale value. And I want to find you the best for what you can afford. So, anyways, as we were driving there, I passed by another community. I was like, oh, dang, this building has a community right here, which is a little closer to the highway. So as I'm driving to that other property, I call that community and I'm like, hey, do you by chance have anything in inventory? Because finding anything in inventory nowadays, just sitting and waiting for me to come and scoop it up is like unreal. Um, oh, so she was like, you know, honestly, she's like, if you're looking at our website, that's not correct. Because their website actually had three homes on there. But she was like, that's not correct. But she's like, I did have one thing one house canceled this morning and um it's coming back on the market this evening at 5 p.m it'll be on our website and i was like oh how much is it and what is it she's like we don't have a price yet waiting for management to um put it back on the market and tell us what price it's going to be because once somebody cancels the contract and it's back on the market these builders are going to increase the price right they're going to increase it to what it could currently sell for today so i don't know how long it had been under contract prior but of course it was probably less um uh, anyways long story short after we leave that builder we head there she waited for us the home was everything we needed y'all it was on a corner lot so it has this massive backyard a really nice size covered patio um it's kind of open um 
layout like you kind of just walk straight back and the kitchen is kind of it has like a small island but with bar stool like whatever right primary bedroom is down really nice walk-in closet it has your garden tub your separate shower your double vanities um this building usually doesn't have um water closets where your toilet has its own little door and room it's usually exposed kind of like old school but this one actually had its toilet in a water closet so whoever built it probably requested that um the primary bedroom has bay windows so it feels really nice and spacious um then you go upstairs and it has a really good sized game room because a lot of the ones we were finding were kind of smaller um, and it has three bedrooms upstairs with three huge walk-in closets on the secondary bedrooms, uh, which was a plus because Tamisha, the basic, they're 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 uh, they got kids together, so they, but they have you know whatever. So she's over here looking, you know, because the kids will be living there. Um, you know, she's always like, oh, these closets are so small. My boys have way too much clothes, you know, and they're, they're just too big. And, you know, so these closets like made her happy. It just, it touched everything that I felt like he wanted to need. The only thing we don't have, <laughs> which is crazy, right, is the price. It's the price. So she gave an estimate roundabout. She's like, I don't think it's going to be more than $315. Um, but she's still waiting to get um, just final numbers. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's right about 315 because if it's any more, I think it's going to put him over um, his comfortable um, monthly mortgage price. So, <sighs> yeah, y'all, those are all the updates that I have. I just got another email. Let's see, tell y'all what this update says. Now here for Keneal's house, <laughs> we're projecting a June, July closing. We have more for introduction walk versus a blue tape. I will go over this with you when we're scheduling. Okay, so Keneal is looking to have a June or July closing. That's good. Um, and then we also have Sharon and Isaac that are still building under construction. I think their closing is going to be in June as well. So, um, what that means to me is that I need some more people to start shopping. Actually, I should have one client coming down at the end of this month from California to hopefully we'll be able to secure a property while she's here and she's looking to close um, towards the end of the year. Um, so yeah, y'all. I need to, I just got back from the gym. I need to go take me a shower. And then um, I have another class um, at the office today. So yesterday, I didn't even show y'all anything yesterday, but yesterday we had a appraiser, appraisal company come out and you know go over like appraisals with us just so we have more knowledge of how that works. And today we're doing a uh, class on how to correctly do comparative market analysis for your sellers and buyers, which I already know, but you know, teach me something, refresh me. Hey, the Lucky Vlog. Happy Monday, April 18th, the day after Easter. I'm here at Jessica's condo and we're gonna do the walkthrough, so let's go. Happy Monday, good people. I have been working. It's 2.17 now. And I'm actually here looking at this property for myself. But it's just too far. Like, I can't even imagine living on this side of town. But this is cute. I wish they were building it on the north side. Who wants to live on the south side? Nobody. <laughs> well, and it got a little backyard. Okay, that's just enough yard for Aspen and then. Oh, go back in there and twirl. <laughs> this thing is huge. You can fit about four people in that thing. Yeah, this closet is just a little tight though. Like, what was the point of this? Well, I don't, what's the point of this? You may want to put like a little, like a little right there. It's another beautiful day in real estate, guys. Good morning. 
So we started the day off doing Taryn's final walkthrough. Everything looks good over here. I have a really light day. Tuesdays are like my days off. Um, but I've come over to DR Horton Foster's Ridge to find out where my client's house is and just see the progress because I ain't never seen it. So let's go. So what I really love about this floor plan is that she has younger kids and you hear this a lot from people that have younger children that normally the secondary bedrooms are always up at the front and it does have that one bedroom but at least in this floor plan they're a little further back you know just people aren't always they don't like having their kids up by the front door of the house by themselves so at least these are still tucked further back and closer to her bedroom so then it's just your study up front and then this other bedroom can now be a guest room for an adult or a mother-in-law or father, you know, just whatever. Um, I like it a lot. We close the door. Although anybody can just walk up in here. Shut that. All right, now, I think I'm done for the day. <laughs> hey people, just later on in the day. Um, let's talk real estate, of course. So yesterday we did Jessica's final walkthrough, right? And y'all know this process with Jessica has been long. I started working with Jessica basically right at the beginning of the year, January. Um, remember she went under contract for this same property that she's purchasing. We terminated that contract because she got a little uncomfortable um, and then she prayed on it and now we're back at this property. We were supposed to close March 31st um, but there has been builder delays right which isn't uncommon but these delays aren't even necessarily because of the build of the home right so long story short, so her cash to close is estimated about basically $4,000 more than it originally was. Originally, she was supposed to be getting a refund because Jessica is the one that has the grant money from the city of Houston for the lift program. If you are um, in Houston and are interested in getting some funds that is um, not going to affect your interest rate and things like that look into um, the neighborhood lift program. I think they release funds every Tuesday or Thursday or something like that. And it's basically first come first serve. Um, but of course there's qualifications for it. Anyways, so all of that. So she was basically going to be able to walk away with um, just paying down her earnest money, which the earnest money on this property was $5,000, which is a lot, especially for a property that the purchase price is 200, basically it was $200,000, 2029, $202,900, um, which it appraised at $2,000. So I'm getting to my point, y'all. So because of that, remember the appraisal, it didn't, it didn't appraise for the full 2029, it appraised right at 200,000. So that means Jessica has to bring that basically $3,000 um, to the closing table. Those funds can't be rolled into the loan. Um, you know, I, I've said this before, lenders can only loan you what the house is worth appraised at. The house is appraisal value. So there's that. And then this is kind of everybody, we all kind of dropped the ball on this situation, including myself. Um, when she started shopping for homeowner's insurance or she went through underwriting, whatever, somebody brought it to our attention that this property is in a flood zone, which just sucked. Um, so now she has to um, get flood insurance. I sent her a few people to get a quote. She, I just got off the phone with her. She told me that she ended up finding somebody that quoted her. You know, she bundled all her insurances together, I think, with Allstate and they are going to be able to get her a um a premium of like eight hundred dollars or something for the year which is that's that's not bad right that's probably about equal to what her homeowner's insurance is um the other quote she was getting was like fourteen sixteen hundred dollars because flood insurance is just expensive and when you close on a property 
you have to pay a full year's worth of these insurance coverages. So your homeowner's insurance, your flood insurance, what other, other insurances you may be getting for the property or that may be required for that property, um, you have to pay one full year's worth at closing. So then that was that $2,900 for the difference of the appraisal and now the flood insurance premium. So basically that just brought us up to about $4,000 and some change, which on the bigger scale of thing, it's like, oh, that's not that much. You know, other people, you know, like Taryn is paying $16,000 to close because she doesn't have any grant or anything like that. But everybody's situations are different. You respect that. At least I do. Um, so we just had a three-way call with her lender and this lender that she has now, um, the lender that I referred her to ended up leaving the company or they went their separate ways. I don't really know. It was very abrupt. We were, we were not forewarned about it. Um, so now we're just dealing with other people at that company that have taken over his files. Um, and the communication just really hasn't been that great. You know, I stress all the time in my vlogs that when I work with lenders, um, I like communication. I like to be kept up to date as often as possible. Any little changes that's being made, let me know. Um, you know, and I'm sure they was, you know, they just kind of got bombarded with all these extra files and things, So, but whatever. So we were just on the phone with her. Um, oh, the other part is, is that why we haven't gotten the clear and close. So they've really pretty much done everything on their end to get the clear to close we're waiting for the seller and all this is new construction there's still a seller so we're waiting for the seller and their people over there to provide insurance so jessica is buying a condo so with a condo the um the seller or really the hoa of the property has to have insurance over the building itself right Jessica has homeowner insurance that will cover everything inside the property. The HOA has to have insurance that covers the actual structure, the building. Um, I don't really know what's going on with that. Something about they had to rewrite their policy. That's, that's the most that I've grasped about that situation. But they haven't been able to provide us with that yet. Um, or really, not us, but the lender. The HOA needs to provide that insurance to the lender so that can go through underwriting. Because, you know, underwriting is basically ticking all these boxes. This is done, this is done, this is done, this is done. That's the one thing that is still not done yet. This has been a delay of, I don't even know how long. The first, the first week where we were delayed, they were saying, oh, the property isn't done. Now the property is done, as we saw yesterday. It just needs to be cleaned. We've been dealing with this delay for the Homeowners Association insurance for, I want to say, like two weeks now. The seller is so hard to get in contact with. The listing agent, he's so hard to get in contact with. When I talk to him about it, he just kind of like brushes it off. He's like, oh, yeah, we're working on that. I'm like, we're working on that. You know, like these delays are having an effect on my client. How are they having an effect on my client other than just not being able to move into the house is that her interest rate was locked back in March, right? The way that these interest rates have been increasing, um, they're having, the lender is having to extend her lock, right? Which costs money. Um, and that is money that Jessica has to pay which, you know, they have given her a bit of a discount on the, these lock extensions, which is appreciated, but we want more of a discount. So right now, I think it's charging her, it really wasn't that much, but it's charging her, I think it was $190 um, for these interest rate extensions, these um, lock extensions, <laughs> lock extensions, that's funny, <laughs> Not these locks. Interest rate lock extensions. Um, when we were on the three-way call with the lender, because I get on the phone, honey. You know, my clients, don't worry about it. If you ain't got the verbiage, I have it. Put me on three-way. Um, so we did a three-way call. And 
you know, the lender was expressing how they've had to um, do a interest rate lock extension three times and they are basically eating that cost, M majority of it. They're only charging her 0.01% and it's been like 4.4% of whatever, however she described it. So I was like, all right, cool, but what else can we do for her? What 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 other lender credits can you um, get for our client? Because um, although the things that are happening aren't necessarily their fault, we gonna ask everybody for some money. And I'm gonna ask myself for some money too after I ask everybody else for some money first. <laughs> um, not that she is, and it's not that she's struggling and she she needs it, but you know. When you go into something and somebody tells you things are going to be a certain way, um, they end up being different. Regardless of how much money you may have saved, you have a number in your head, you kind of want to stick with that number. Um, so I asked her, she was like, well, they're probably not going to. And I said, oh, you said the wrong word. Probably. Let's find out for sure if they'll be willing to give any more credit, which more than likely she's probably right now, probably say no. But we can only ask. You and I are currently working for Jessica. So we need to be advocating for our client. And she's like, well, maybe you can call the, the seller and see if they'll be willing to give. And I said, oh, you don't have to worry about that. I'm already on that. I'm about to do, 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 type up this email and call George and be like, this is what's happening because of you all's delay. You didn't want to get, you didn't want to adjust the sales price. What can we do to get this client out of this situation you know like that's that's what I need to know um, and all we can do is ask so that's what's going on with Jessica so this current rate lock that we have in is good until April 29th prayerfully we will be closed by April 29th which is not this Friday today is Tuesday the 19th uh, so not this Friday but next Friday um, or probably even before that I'm really my mind is telling me next Wednesday. Um, so hopefully it'll be that. Because even if we were to, even if the HOA insurance did get to the lender today, then they still have to submit, the lender has to submit that to their underwriting team, which could take 24 to 48 hours, which would basically put us at Thursday, let's even say Friday. Um, and then even if that, that would normally be like the final, oh, we, that's all we needed, get the clear to close, lender and title balance, and we go. But because now we have this an additional step of Jessica's Neighborhood Lift grant funds, we have to get the clear to close, the disclosures, send that to them. They do what they need to do on their end and then wire the money to the lender. So then the lender can wire the money to the title company. The title company can then pay the seller and me. Um, so that's where we at with that. Um, that's it really, y'all. Everybody else, for the most part, is pretty smooth selling. Um, Taryn does close tomorrow, so that is good. Um, and, you know, I, I really hope y'all learn so much in these videos how just... Every transaction can be different, even though there is a standard way of doing things. Every transaction just is different. You just, it's always something. It's always something. So, and then everybody else is just kind of chilling under contract. So, waiting for the houses to be built. Um, yeah, y'all. So, that's the update. That's it. Good morning. Happy closing day. We are closing on Taryn today, Wednesday, April 20th. Um, I got my salt sign. I got her basket. I need to go pick up her mat. Um, one of my friends from the brokerage made it for me. I need to pick up that. She said she's not too far from the title company. So that's where we're headed this morning. Then we have a few other things to do. Um, and I'll catch y'all up on all that other stuff. I decided to go with Alexia as my realtor from really her social media. Like I liked her posts. I, then I especially liked that she showed her parents home and that the testimony that she provided with that. And then knowing and talking to her and just knowing the wealth of knowledge that she had about the industry and having a background with parents within the industry as well made me feel very comfortable. And so also being a young black woman, I'm going to 
privilege that approach as well. Um, but I will tell you, but with my experience, this is a rough time to buy. We see the news reports all the time, but I knew that I was going to be working from home and I, I knew that I wanted to have us, I wanted to invest in the place that I was comfortable in. And so I started looking online and going through the lending process or beginning the lending process to get pre-approved. And I remember shooting Alexia things that were out of my price range because <laughs> I didn't know. And things that, that seemed, you know, oh, I could do that. That's, it's cute. And uh, we were out shopping one day, uh, my first day out. And both one home was on the south side, and I was like, no, this is too far. Traffic is bad because I'm a north side lady, mm -hmm. northwest side particularly. Um, but when we came back on the northwest side, and I was like, this is a no-go. I, I just didn't see the vision. Plus, it was late at night. And we we kind of re-backtracked, or what are the other things that I was looking at? And so she was like let me call right now literally she said let me call right now not let me see you know tomorrow and it's like 5 30 something 6 p.m but she was like let me call right now she did and um fortunately a home that was pending and you know no longer on the market was potentially coming back up she worked her magic talked to the buy talked to the seller and they ended up letting us come view the house the next day before it was going to go back on to market and um, we shot off from there, but then mortgage rates hit and the, the uh, Federal Reserve hike hit. Um, but I will tell you, I am at closing on today. This is April 20th, <laughs> April 20th, 2022. I am very pleased and uh, very blessed to know that I have invested in something that will um, be very fruitful. And so that is definitely in thanks to God and Alexia as my realtor through this process because she also connected me with my lender. So for anyone else about to begin this process, uh, best wishes and also know that you were in the hands of someone that does care um, about you given what's going on and will be there every step of the way. Thank you, love. Hey y'all, happy almost end of April. I think it's the 27th or something still fighting to get Jessica closed. I thought I just got an email that was going to be about receiving the last document that we needed and we did. It was an email that said we finally got whatever but now we still need. I'm like you never mentioned nothing about me that. So now she's saying they won't have that document until next week when I was thinking by this Friday, today's Wednesday, I was thinking by this Friday, we would have had the final document and then we could have been preparing to close for next week. But now we're still on hold for a document that we need that won't be here until next week. So I'm just, me and Jessica were on the phone earlier saying we just had a nice little kiki and hee hee. We were like, girl, when we close, finally. We're going to wear matching outfits. We have the same purse. We're going to be twins. <laughs> Just really trying to make light in the best of the situation when there's things are just outside of your control. My phone just a beeping. Uh, it's been a little bit of a rough week for me, y'all. I got my taxes done. Taxes. That's all I'm sorry about that. Mahogany, my car. It looks like I'm in my car, but I'm not one. These windows not tinted. My, I drive a Mazda CX-5, and my um, parking brake has malfunctioned. So it, my my back two tires are locked down and can't move. So I just got an estimate for that. So I'm like, I need to work. I need to get my hustle up. I've onboarded about three or four new clients this week, two leases and two buyers. Um, so, I mean, there's gonna be money coming in because baby, it feels like all all this month, I just been getting hit with bills. <laughs> so I gotta work. So who do you know? Who do you know that really wants to sell their house? I need somebody that wanna sell a house. Send me a seller, please. Please and thank you. If you want to sell your house, here in Houston, Texas, whatever your property is, 
really anywhere. You want to sell your whole property anywhere in Texas? Call me, please and thank you. <laughs> Good morning. I am feeling so much better than yesterday. Today is April 28th, Thursday. I'm still in this rental car, but um, I have a client in town that I have been um, talking with since, I think we've been talking since February. We had our initial consultation um, and she was supposed to come out here last month and things got delayed. Anyway, she's in town. She got here yesterday um, from San Francisco and she's here for a couple of days. So we're gonna be going on all points of Houston and its surrounding suburbs. So north, south, east, and west. Um, so she can kind of get a feel of the fit, get a feel of the city. Of course, we're gonna be looking at um, communities and she can see surrounding areas because honestly, she's just like, I don't really know where I wanna stay. You know, she just knows what kind of house she's looking for. So the next couple of days, we'll be doing that with her name is Kimberly. Um, and then I have some lease clients to show this evening. Yesterday just, I was supposed to start working with Kimberly yesterday and that just, you know, so it's thrown my schedule off a little bit and we're tweaking some things, but that's okay. We just, we roll with the punches, right y'all? Anyways, the month is almost coming to an end and Jessica's still not gonna close. All right, that's all I got. All right, y'all, Kimberly and I are at our second community for the day. This is a DR Horton, but it's their modern series, which I love. Like, aren't these pretty? This is on the south side of Houston. City Gate is the name of the community. So we're gonna see what they have to offer. Yeah. It's always fun trying to divvy up the space when it's just in frame stage. <laughs> But 